Y'all welcome back to this very YouTube channel. For today, I'll be taking um, Emmanuel's to Fourier series. This is going to be a revision series. Now, remember, if I am very fast, you can actually reduce the playback speed. But one of my friends said it's going to double the speed instead. Okay, now I'm going to be solving these questions. I've already taken part one, so this is part two, and it's Fourier series. I'm going to be solving 10 questions because in the exam, we're going to be having just 10 questions inside your exam. Now, for some reasons, this, are, this very video is going to be a long ass video. It's going to be very long. So I'm going to try to see what I can do to make it much more shorter. Obviously, if you know Fourier series, it's very, very long to actually evaluate. So I'm going to try our best to make sure that this is very fast. Remember to hit the subscribe button, like this video, and share it across to your friends. Share it across to all of your classmates. So the first question says, State whether the function is odd, even, or neither. First of all, algebraically, should in case you are asked, algebraically, if the function is even, it means f of s, sorry, f of minus s is equal to f of x. This is for an even function. So if the function is even, this is what you are going to be getting, algebraically. Then if the function is odd, f of minus s is minus f of x. So this goes for an odd function. That is when the function is what? Odd. This only happens when the function is odd. Now, neither means none of them will be satisfied. Now, look at this. Graphically, how do we then know if a function is even or odd? Graphically. If a function is even, graphically, it is symmetric about the y-axis. Symmetric about the y-axis. This guy is symmetric about the y-axis. Then if it is odd, it is symmetric about the origin. Now remember, you can watch my video on even and odd functions. I will link the video up there so you learn how to know an even and odd function algebraically and graphically. This is an even function. Why is it an even function? This is your y-axis. The y-axis is like a mirror, and that is why they say symmetric. It means at one part of it and at the other side, it is the same. Imagine if you are looking at a mirror, or imagine if you place, let me say this very carefully, you place it in a mirror. You will notice that the same thing inside the mirror is the same thing outside. So this ball, this ball here, will then become the y axis. So it is symmetric. If you look at this, if you separate this together, you will find out that this part and this part are the same. In such a way that if you even close them together, their points are going to overlap. Their points are going to overlap each other. Another good example is um, I wanted to use my this very here, but no need. I believe we get that already. So this is an even function. For some reasons, they might even turn the diagram upside down. They might say the diagram is like this. I don't want to make some mistakes. Let me see. Something like this. Aha. So if we have this guy, someone can also say this function is even because it is symmetric about the y axis. So they can turn it wrong. So you can learn the rest of them from my video on even or not function. So this function is an even function. So that's just the answer. You just write in the option. Sorry, at the empty box, even. Finish, that's all. Now, the second question says, determine the Fourier series for the periodic function defined by this guy. Now, they help you in a way to draw the graph so that to make life easy for you. Because with a graph, we can determine if a function is even or odd, and hence, reduce the stress we are going to use to solve for our coefficients in Fourier series. Now, this very question, this is the graph. Now, let me ask you, is the graph even or odd? Or is the function even or odd? The first thing you look at is, is it symmetric about the y-axis or symmetric about the origin? So I am going to say that this guy is was symmetric about the y-axis. This is the y-axis, I look at it carefully, even though I drew it kind of small, like smaller. So if you look at the y-axis, you will notice that whatever is on this side is the same on this very side. If you want to get started, you will see that, oh, this part here, this very side, is the same thing as this very side. Then these two sides are the same, these two are the same, these two are the same, and so on and so forth. So they are the same. So it's symmetric about the y-axis. So this is a, this is a what? This is going to be an even function. So what will I do? I'm going to be finding my a naught and a sub n. Only a naught and a sub n. Now, because this very guy, I have solved for it before, please. I can conclude that the a naught for this is zero. Because I have solved this guy before. I'm going to link up the video up here so that you watch it. So I've solved this very guy before. So see, ideally, I might want to just solve it, but because of time, A0 will give me zero. 
How do I know? The should I call it the centroid? This part, look at it. The y axis above and below are the same. Same thing with the x axis. So the points from here to here and from here to here are the same. From this part to this maximum and to this very minimum are still the same. So this guy is going to be zero. So I don't think I will need to stress myself to solve that. Meaning I only need to solve for my what? My a sub n. A sub n. And what is a sub n if you have an even function? a sub n is 2 over pi integral from 0 to pi of f of s cos nx dx. So that guy is what you have for your a sub n if you have an even function. So this is going to become a sub n equal 2 over pi open a bracket integral from 0 to pi over 2 now why am I bringing or reducing the integral? This very formula says integral from 0 to pi but there is no function value that I run from 0 to pi look at it this way come back to the graph this is 0 to pi this is your pi 0 to pi is there any value that runs straight across? no if we had 0 to pi over 2 then pi over 2 to pi so that's why that's I'm splitting it then f of s cos nx dx plus integral from pi over 2 to pi f of s cos nx okay so i'm going to be wiping off that very part um, simply because it's not going to be important anymore so we then have cos nx dx and i'm going to close this bracket up i'm going to close it up okay now looking at this very guy, the next thing I'll then do is to impute my function values. So a sub n will then become um, 2 over pi, and then I have the integral, or let me open this bracket, integral from 0 to pi over 2. What is f of x from 0 to pi over 2? From 0 to pi over 2, f of x is equal to about 2. So we have 2 cos nx plus the integral from um, pi over 2 to pi what is the function value across pi over 2 to pi from pi over 2 to pi we're going to be having minus 2 so I can rewrite this as minus 2 cos nx dx I can rewrite that very guy so let me proceed if you look at this carefully you will notice that oh 2 is common with the integrals so I'm going to be bringing out that very so I'll say a sub n will then become 4 over pi Simply because if 2 is being factorized out, I'm going to be having 2 times 2, so that's going to be 4. So this will then become, I'm um, opening brackets, integral from 0 to pi over 2. What the left here, okay, I, don't, I did not put the x here. So this will become cos nx dx plus integral of um, pi over 2 to pi cos nx dx. This minus sign, let us bring it outside. So that means I'm going to be having a minus sign here. Okay, now this very portion, let me integrate cos nx. This a sub n, I think I'm going to stop writing a sub n. 4 over pi, uh, open a bracket, this will become, what will cos nx give to you if you should integrate? You'll be having sine nx over n. Then I'm going to put 0 to pi over 2 minus, this is going to become same thing, sine nx over n. And I'm going to be having pi over 2 pi. Okay, so this is what I have. Now, if you look at this carefully, over n over n, meaning it's common, right? I can make it out. So this a sub n equals 4 over pi n. I can make it out. Then I'll be having sine nx, sine nx from 0 to pi over 2 minus sine nx from pi over 2 to pi. Okay. So that's what we have. So this is a sub n equal um, 4 over n pi or pi n, any of them. At this point, what do I do? I'm simply going to be putting my what? My pi over 2. So this will become sine pi over 2n, sine pi over 2n minus, I'm going to put sine 0, right? Well, sine 0 is 0, so just throw that away. Sine 0 is just, just throw it away. Minus sine pi right because i'm going to say minus sine pi i want to sign pi zero no matter the number so that part is gone also what will be left minus sine pi over two then i put my n 
I hope you get this part. It's very, very simple. Remember that without this minus and this here, there's going to be an internal minus when evaluating this very lower limit. There will be an internal minus. So that's why I put this very minus sign here. So this will then become 4 over n pi, 4 over n pi, this guy, then open a bracket, minus minus will give me a plus, right? And these two things are the same. So this will become 2 sine pi over 2n. So that's what we're going to be getting. Okay, now if this becomes our result, these two can come outside, right? So this will become 8 over n pi um, sine pi over 2n. Okay, that's what I have. Now this very part, I'm going to say something. I have earlier solved things that have sine pi over 2n. So I'm going to give you the formula, so in case you see it any other time, you can use it. First of all, if n is even, if n is even, it means a sub n will then become 0. Because if n is even here, sine whatever result will then become 0. So sine whatever will then become 0. And 0 tends to give us what? 0. Then if n is equal 1, 5, 9, our a sub n will become 8 over n pi. Now why is it like that? The result of this, when we have 1, 5, and 9, is always positive 1. You can try it out if you want to. So this will give you 8 over n pi. Remember I've solved all of this before and this is just a revision series. So the next one is if n is equal 3, um, 7, 11, our a sub n will become minus 8 over n pi. So this is what we'll be getting simply because the bracket will then become a negative 1. And if you multiply with that, you'll be getting minus whatever. Now at this point, can we evaluate the Fourier series? Definitely. So f of x will then become a naught over 2 plus the summation from n equal to 1 to infinity of a sub n cos nx um, plus b sub n. But b sub n is going to be giving me my 0. So just throw that away. The next thing I will then do is kind of simple. I'm going to be saying that f of s is going to be equal to, already this part is 0, right? I've told you why. But if you want to solve for it, you can. So we have the other guy plus the summation from n equal to 1 to infinity of a sub n cos nx. Now this is what we get started with the series. Let us write something. f of x will then become, so what I'm going to be doing here. I'm going to be saying, this very guy that we have here, this very guy that we have here, means we should start summing from n equal to 1. Now when n is 1, what's happening? We have 8 over n pi, right? So this is 8 over pi cos x. Remember that your n is 1. So 8 over 1 is still 8. Then, when n is 2, remember if it's even, a naught does not exist. So what's the next number? 3. So what we're going to have, this will become minus 8 over 3 pi. Minus 8 over 3 pi. Cos what? 3 x. What's the next number? 5. So this will become 8 over 5 pi. This plus 8 over 5 pi. Cos 5 x minus 8 over 7 pi sine 7 x. f of s will finally become, factorize this, this will become 8 over pi, open a bracket, cos x minus 1 over 3 cos 3 x plus 1 over 5 cos 5 x minus 1 over 7. What am I going to use it? Okay, yes, this is supposed to be cos naught cos 7x, cos 7x. So that will be the final answer to that very question. That will be the final answer to that very question. So that's what we have. The next one, the next question. Let us go to the next question and let us see what that is going to be. Let us see what that's going to be. Remember to hit the subscribe button, like this very video, and share it across to all of your classmates. Yes, and let us see how this guy is going to look like. So the question 3 says, find the Fourier series, find the Fourier series expansion, expansion uh, of f of s equal to s squared. 
and then we have the range of value 0 less than x less than 2 pi. So this is what we have for that. Okay, now this very question 3, it's kind of very, um, somehow, because we have an s squared, so it's going to be very long. Now ideally, so, so that you won't make this mistake in the exam hall, s squared is actually an even function. But the problem is this, in Fourier series, we, we must make sure that the interval is symmetric. Now what do we mean by that? We mean it of the form minus L comma L, or rather minus pi comma pi. This is a must. It must look like this. It must look like that. It's a must. So but right now, it's not looking like that. It's looking 0 comma 2 pi. So we can be assuming that. So that means we have to solve for everything. Everything. So we're going to do this the fast way. So I, I hope you flow with me because these questions are possible exam questions. Like they are, they are just possible. Even if you don't see them, the way I'm going to solve them will help you in the exam hall. Solution. I know that yesterday we find what a naught. Now a naught is one over pi integral from what zero to two pi because this is zero to two pi of f of s dx. So let us get started with that. Now this will become 1 over pi integral from 0 to 2 pi. f of s is s squared, right? So this is s squared dx. Now this 1 over pi, we then have what? This will then become integrate s squared. What will you be getting? You will get s cubed over 3. Then put your limit 0 to 2 pi. Now this 1 over pi times, what will this become? Anyway, you see, I'm going to be putting what? 2 cube. Sorry, 2 pi rather. So this is 2 pi all to the power of 3 divided by 3. I'm not going to be using the 0 simply because um, 0 cube is 0. 0 over 3 is still 0. So this will give me 1 over pi times 2 cube is 8. Then I have my pi cube divided by 3. Now I'll be the final answer of this. This will become 8 pi squared. Over three, so this is what we have, something like that. Okay, so that is our a naught. The next guy, a sub n. What will a sub n become? Now, formula for a sub n is one over pi integral from zero to two pi f of s cos n x dx. Okay, now this will become one over pi integral from zero to two pi f of s is x squared cos nx dx. Now, because we have s squared here, we also have to be doing integration by parts twice. So there's a method that we can use to always double integration by parts without stressing ourselves. So let me teach you. This is one over pi, open a bracket. Now let us get started. Write your s squared now. This is s squared, right? Good. Differentiate this very guy. Oh, then we get it. If we do that, sorry, I said differentiate. Integrate equals or integrate it rather. Integrate is what we'll be getting. You'll be getting sine nx divided by what? n. This is s squared, and that's what I'm going to be doing. This is s squared, right? Good. If this is s squared, on this, all will become 2x, right? Because if I should differentiate s squared, I'm going to be getting 2x. Then 2x, all I get to differentiate 2x, I'm going to be getting what? 2. So I've written, see what I'm doing, see what I'm doing. Write your s squared down. Then differentiate your s squared to so then get zero. If we differentiate to you, you'll be getting zero. So no need for the fourth number. Now this is sine nx all over n. Can we integrate this guy again? Yes. Integrate sine, what would we get? You'll be getting minus cos nx over what? n squared. Remember that there's already an over n before. So integrate again will then give you what? n squared. Then this very guy is a two. This answer here, what do we do to this very answer? Integrate it again, what are we going to be getting? This will become uh, minus sine nx over n cube. Okay, so this will have. Now, what I say next, I'm going to be saying this is plus, minus, plus. Very sweet. I think it's better to use this very approach. Very, very better. So, you are, you are going to see it again when I'm finding this sub n. So, this is one of a pi. I then have. Um, s squared sine nx over n um, minus s minus to give me a plus so this is plus 2s cos nx over n squared uh, plus s minus is minus so this is minus 2 sine nx 
over n cube. And then our limits 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 2 pi. Now, this very point, what would I do finally? I'm going to be saying, anyway, I see x, I'm going to be putting what? 2 pi. But to make this very simple and easy for me, sine 2 pi and sine 0 will always give you 0. Sine 2 pi and sine 0 will always give you 0. It means that these two guys are gone. That's the meaning. These two guys are gone. The only really useful human being here is this very guy in the middle. This is the really useful thing here. So this will then become 1 over pi. And then I have um, 2. S is what? 2 pi. So this is 2 pi cos 2 pi n divided by n squared. And this one over pi, um, I'll then be having 2 times 2 pi is what? 4 pi over n squared. Now, please take note, cos 2 pi would always give you 1. Cos 2 pi, regardless of what n is going to be, will be giving you a 1. So this will then become, um, do it. okay, yes, this is correct. So pi will take away pi, one will then be left, 4 over n squared. So let me put this guy somewhere. I think I want to be putting the answers here. So a naught is um, 8 pi squared over 3. Then um, a sub n is 4 over n squared. So I think we've gotten that, right? So let us get the next one, b sub n. So I'm going to be wiping this place and let us just get our b sub n. Let us see. And let us use the faster method for integration. So I'll be saying b sub n is 1 over pi, integral from 0 to 2 pi, f of s sine nx, sine nx dx. Now remember to hit the subscribe button, like this very video, and share it across to your classmates. So this is 1 over pi, and then I have integral from 0 to 2 pi, because that's what's clearly stated here, 0 to 2 pi, f of s is s squared sine nx dx. So this is what I have. Now, this one about pi. Now, see what I'm going to be doing. See what I'm going to be doing to do this very, very fast. This is s squared, right? Write your s squared down. Differentiate s, what will you get? You get 2x. Differentiate 2s, what will you get? 2. So this is what we have, right? Now, this is sine nx. Integrate sine nx, what will you be getting? Minus cos nx over what? n. Minus cos nx over n. Integrate it again. What will you be getting? You'll be getting minus sine nx over n squared. Minus sine nx over this. Integrate this part again. What will you be getting? You'll be getting what? Cos nx over n cubed. Now, what do we do next? We say plus minus plus. Very beautiful. I think this method is even much more easier to use. Then don't forget your limits, 0 to what? 2 pi. Now this is 1 over pi, then I have s squared times this is what? Minus s squared cos nx over n. Minus times minus is plus 2x sine nx over n squared. Then plus this guy is what? 2 cos nx over n cubed. And then I have 0 to 2 pi. Okay, this is getting really, really, really interesting. Now, this very part, what do we do? Anywhere we see it, we're going to be putting 2 pi and 0. Now, the beautiful thing is this we have another sign guy here. So, for this very sign guy, what does that tell me? That tells me that my answer is always going to be 0 for 0 and what? 2 pi. So, my, this guy, I can just remove it because it's always going to be giving me 0. So, I can take this guy out. Yes, it's possible I can take it out. Okay, so what do we have? We have this very guy. This guy is proving to be useful. So we have this very guy. I'm going to be leaving it. I'm going to be leaving it. Okay. So this is all about pi. Um, open a bracket. I'll be saying minus. S is 2 pi, right? So this is 2 pi cos 2 pi n. Because S is now 2 pi. 2 pi times n is 2 pi n. Divided by n. Then plus. What is this next part going to be? So this will become 2 cos 2 pi n divided by n cubed. Beautiful, right? Okay. Then, what the next guy become? Minus. Look at it this way. Why is this minus coming here? Listen. We have done evaluating. We have done evaluating everything here for 2 pi. 
and we're going to the lower limit so we're going to be saying minus the answers of everything here so i hope you get that so that's why the minus is here now if we should put zero here for s squared zero times this cos to give me zero so everything here is gone remember that this guy is gone already so we have this very guy remaining so this is two cos zero n divided by n cubed okay let us proceed now this is one over pi and then i have um, minus 2 pi over n. Why is it minus 2 pi over n? Remember that cos 2 pi n is always 1. Always 1. Then divided by n plus, what does that give to me? 2 over n cubed minus 2 over what? n cubed. Remember that cos 0 is 1. So 1 times 2 is 2. And this will then be giving us 1 over pi and then I have negative 2 pi over what n? Sorry, hold on. There's a square here. I didn't really get that part. There's a square at this very side. There's a square here. Okay. So let us continue. This is 1 over pi. Then I have, if I should open this very I'll be getting negative 4 pi squared divided by n. Now, final answer for this will become uh, minus 4 pi over n. I think that is, yes, that's all we'll be getting. Very beautiful. So I'm going to be saying uh, b sub n is equal minus 4 pi over n. This is very, very interesting. And at this part, I can see what is my Fourier series expression or expansion for this whole series. So let us get the Fourier series expansion for this. And let us see what the final answer is going to be looking like. I can wipe this part off. Can wipe this part off. So this will become um, what do we have here? f of x is equal a naught over two plus the sum from n equal to one to infinity of a sub n cos n x plus b sub n sine n x. I'm going to be putting this guy in a bracket. Okay. So this is what we have. Okay. Now this will become f of s equal a naught. What is a naught? We have a not as 8 pi squared over 3. Now, don't forget that there's a 2 here, right? So, I will just say times 2. Then plus uh, the summation from n equal to 1 to infinity. What is a sub n? a sub n is 4 over n squared. So, this is 4 over n squared cos nx. Then what is b sub n? b sub n is minus 4 pi over um, 1 and n, then sine nx. Okay, 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 let me wipe this part off. Remember in the exam, we have just three hours, like to answer everything. So we're gonna to try to be fast and try to simplify everything that we've got. Okay, um, what do I do here? This is f of x equal, a to the two will give me a four, right? So this is four, pi squared divided by 3 at the end of the day. And um, for this very part, okay, 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 okay. Now, um, 4 is common, right? Okay, let me do for cos first of all. Let us do for cos before going to sine. Let us do for cos first of all. I can split this as the sum from n equal to 1 to infinity of um, 4 over n squared cos nx then minus the sum from n equal to 1 to infinity of um, 4 pi over n sine nx. I think it's better I split it that way. So this f of x equals 4 pi squared over 3. Now from this very part, from this very part, the first thing I will have to know is this. 4 is a constant, right? So if 4 is a constant, I can make it out. So I will say this is plus 4, then open the brackets. What will be remaining if 4 comes outside? Remember that this is always 4 times 1, right? So I'm going to be having 1 over n squared and so on and so forth. So this will become 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 squared. Okay, let me just put the square here. Plus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 4 squared and so on and so forth. But what is missing? Don't forget there is a cos nx. I think we make that mistake sometimes. Don't forget that there is a what? Cos nx. So I will say this is 1 cos x plus 1 over 2 squared cos 2x plus 1 over 3 squared cos 
3x and let me end there for that very guy. The other thing we got to have for sine. And look at sine properly. This is minus. What's common here? What's the factor that is a constant? 4 pi. So I will say this is 4 pi. Then open a bracket. If 4 pi is all be remaining, 1 over n will be remaining. So I will say this is um, sine x plus 1 over 2 sine 2x two plus 1 over 3 sine 3x plus and so on and so forth. So this is your final answer. Like this is the final answer. So we have this very guy here. This is the whole answer. Now please take note. Should in case you are asked to leave your answer in the nth term, this is going to be your result. In the nth term, this is going to be your result. If they ask to leave your answer in the nth term, this is going to be your final answer. Otherwise, let us proceed to the next question. Now the next question is actually very, very, very wrong. But I do not want to just write it down. Now, the thing is this. We are asked to derive a series. I'm going to just explain this briefly. When deriving a series, many a times there are rules, there are midpoint rules that we use to find a possible value of x. But the question says, with this very expression that we have here, let s be equal to 0. And then you are asked to deduce a series for pi squared over 6. Now, if you can even notice, the series is even on my clothes. I think this is it, pi squared over 6. But the problem is, pi squared over 6 is the sum from n equal to 1 to infinity of the reciprocals of all squares. But when I solved this very problem, I found out that this guy was not gotten. So something different. And as such, that very equation is wrong. And um, I think the lecturers would have to know what to do in that very case. But you can be asked to actually deduce something. So I'm going to be bringing out one question on that, that later. But for now, I am not doing that guy. For now, I'm not going to do it. So let us go to the next one. And let us see what the next one is going to be. Um, we have question four. It says, um, find the Fourier series expansion. Find the Fourier series expansion. Expansion. For the function, for the function, for the function, uh, in the nth term, in the nth term, in the nth term, comma, f of s equal pi minus x, beautiful, in 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 2 pi, um, with period, with period, um, where is it, with period of 2 pi, okay. Something like this. So this very question we're asked to solve for this, and we have pi minus x. So how do we then solve for the Fourier series of this very guy? It's also going to be very easy. I think we can even do this much more faster because we just have pi minus x and not x squared. So it should be a little bit more easier for us to solve. A little bit, a little bit. I did not say it's going to be too easy. A little bit. So we have pi minus x. A0 is equal to 1 over pi, the integral from 0 to 2 pi, uh, pi minus x, dx. If you can remember the formula for A0, this is just the formula. So we're going to, we're going to just put the pi minus x here. This is going to become 1 over pi. Integrate pi, what will you get? You're going to be getting pi x minus, integrate x, what will you be getting? You'll be getting x squared over 2. And then you're going to put your 0 towards 2 pi. Okay. Now this is 1 over pi. Um, what am I going to be doing here? Anyway, it says I'm going to be putting 2 pi, right? So this will become pi bracket 2 pi minus 2 pi squared over 2. The 0 is not going to be important because it's going to cancel out. So I'll just throw that part away. Okay. So this will become 1 over pi. Uh, 5 times 2 pi will give me 2 pi squared minus 2 pi squared is actually 4 pi squared over 2, right? Okay, and to make this very beautiful, the final answer of this is 0. Yes, it's actually good that mathematically you can see the final answer of stops. 4 over 2 is what? It's 2, right? So 2 pi squared minus 2 pi squared is 0. So that guy is 0. 
a sub n, I think this should also be 0. I think so. Okay. Now a sub n will become 1 over pi integral from 0 to 2 pi of um, f of s, which is pi minus x, then cos nx dx. If you can remember what that guy is. I think I'm going to be coming up both to solve that very guy. Because it's going to be long. Okay, for some reasons, I'm having a feeling that that guy will still give us zero. So I would have saved a lot, a lot of time if I had just written it down. Okay, but let me just continue. Now this will become a sub n equal 1 over pi. What do I normally do? What did I tell you you do? Write this very guy, pi minus x, right? Write it down. Integrate cos nx. What will you be getting? You'll be getting sine nx over what? n, right? Then this is pi minus s. Differentiate pi minus s. What will you be getting? Think of it. The pi is 0, right? So differentiate minus s. What will you be getting? Minus 1. Then this is sine nx all over n. What will you do? Integrate it. So all this become? This will become um, sine will give us minus cos nx over n squared. Now why is it over n squared? Because there has been an n there before. And I'll put my 0 towards 2 pi. Then don't forget, this is plus, minus. So I have so many minuses. So this is going to become a sub n equal 1 over pi. Uh, I then have pi minus x sine nx over n. Put this guy in a bracket. Then minus cos minus cos nx over n squared. Then I'll be having 0 to 2 pi. Okay, because minus times minus is plus. So the, this minus will still retain itself. Whew, okay, so let us put our 2 pi and see what our result is going to be. Let us put our 2 pi. Like I said, the answer of this is definitely 0. Now, if I should put 2 pi here, remember that for sine, anytime you see sine, if you should put 0, put 2 pi, put 3 pi, whatever, the answer is what? 0. So if we should put 2 pi here for sine is 0, put 0 for sine is still going to give you 0. So what is the reasonable thing that's going to be remaining? This guy. So this a sub n equal 1 over pi. Um, this will become minus cos nx over n squared. And that's from 0 to 2 pi. So this is what I have. Now, this minus sign can come outside, right? It can come outside. So this is, um, let me just put a minus here. So the minus is out. And this a sub n equal minus 1 over pi. I then have anywhere I see um, this, I'll be putting, I'll be putting what 2 pi. So this is n squared is also common. So this is cos 2 pi n minus cos 0 n. Now what's cos 2 pi n? 1. What's cos 0? 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, right? So everything is 0. Everything is just 0. So that's, that's why I said that this guy, a sub n, is equal to zero. So that's why it's good to always, because when you look at it spiritually and you just get it. Okay, b sub n is going to be very useful to us, like very, very useful. b sub n will become 1 over pi, integral from 0 to 2 pi, of um, pi minus x sine nx dx. So this is what we have for that very guy. I can clean this guy. Just remember that they said n stem actually, so I can clean it off. Just remember to say that. So what I'll be doing on this very part, this will become b sub n equal 1 over pi. Now open a bracket, write your pi minus x, pi minus x. Differentiate pi minus x, what will you be getting? Minus 1. It's very better you do it this way. Differentiate minus 1, what will you be getting? 0. No need for you to write that very part. Now this is sine nx. Integrate sine nx, what will you be getting? You'll be getting what? Minus, minus cos nx. All over n, that's what you'll be getting, right? Thank you. Then, integrate minus cos nx again. What will you be getting? You'll be getting minus sine nx over n squared. Now, this is plus and this is minus. Don't forget this step that I'm following. Then I'll be putting um, 0 to 2 pi. Okay. Wow. This is going to be very, very, very b sub n will become 1 over pi um, I'll then be having this minus I can come outside so this is minus um, pi minus x okay 
cos nx divided by n minus sine minus is a plus. So this minus will retain itself. So this is minus sine nx over n squared from 0 to 2 pi. Now remember, provided we have sine nx and there's a 2 pi and 0, this part is always going to be given us 0. So we can forget about the very part. So this is b sub n equal 1 over pi. Now, let us open the brackets. I can bring out this minus sign out because this is the only reasonable view moment I'm looking at. Because this guy is now 0. Now, pi minus x, what is x in the first place? 2 pi. So I'll say this is pi minus 2 pi cos 2 pi n divided by n minus all of them become the next guy. I will say that this is pi minus 0 cos 0 n divided by what? n. So this is what I'll be getting. So this will become b sub n equal minus 1 over pi. Um, open a bracket. Pi minus 2 pi will give us what? Minus pi then over n. Then minus pi again over n. Remember that cos 2 pi is 1, right? And 1 times anything is that same thing. Cos 0 is 1, 1 times anything is 1, that same So that's why we have this very result. Now look at it this way. This will become b sub n equal. If you take a very close look at this, you will notice that minus, 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 they will all disappear. Because it's just like you're opening the brackets. So this will then become um, 1 over pi. Then we have pi over n plus pi over n. So this b sub n equal 1 over pi, and then we're going to be having what? If you add those two guys, you'll be getting, you'll be getting 2 pi over n. So pi will cancel pi, right? So this will then give you b sub n equal what? 2 over what? n. So this will then become your result for that. So that will then become your final answer for that very guy. So we then have 2 over what? n. Yeah, this should be the right result. So let us now proceed. Now, b sub n is 2 over what? n. Fourier series, f of s is going to become the sum from n equal to 1 to infinity of what? Of b sub n sine nx. Now, why did I not use the other guys? Because they gave me 0. They all gave me 0. So this will then become the summation from n equal to 1 to infinity. What is b sub n? b sub n is 2 over n, so we have 2 over n sine nx. And this will become the sum from n equal to 1 to infinity. Um, 2 is a constant, so I can bring it, bring it out. 1 over n sine nx. Now this 2, open a bracket, let us start with n equal to 1. What will this become? Sine x plus 1 over 2 sine 2x plus 1 over 3 sine 3x plus and so on and so forth. So that will be the Fourier series for that very guy. That is going to become the Fourier series for that very guy. So if that's correct, let us move to the next one. It's so sad that we are still at, I think question number 4 or so. This is going to become question number 5. It's going to become question number 5. Let us see how this is going to look. Question 5. Determine the half range, determine, determine the half range, um, okay, I think there's a problem with this, the series for the function, there's a problem with this, for the function defined by f of s equal x and 0 when it is x when 0 is less than or equal to x less than or equal to pi over 2 and 0 when it is at pi over 2 less than or equal to x less than or equal to pi so you hold on let me check this guy it's not looking like I expected they should specify which of the half range I'm going to be doing so that is why I have not yet done that so hold on um, hold on. Let us see. Um, where will I find it? I'm almost there. Let me see. 
Let me see where this question is coming from. I think I'm seeing this question. Please hold on. Okay. Remember to hit the subscribe button, like this very video, and share it across to all of your course mates. Remember to do that. Just remember to do it. Okay, and I'm not able to get that. Wow. Okay, so let me let me assume. Let us just assume that we're doing for the um, science series of that. Let us assume we're going to be doing for the science series of that very guy. It's an assumption. So let us assume we're going to be doing for the science series. Okay. I think this should be half range, sign, whatever. Solution. So let us get started. We're going to be doing for the science series, please. And please, for science series, we're only finding B sub n, and B sub n is 2 over pi when it is a science series. Integral from 0 to pi of from f of x sine nx dx. So this is what we'll be getting. Now, I am going to be splitting this integral simply because they did not give me 0 to pi. Instead, they gave me 0 to pi over 2 and pi over 2 towards pi. So this will then become b sub n equal 2 over pi. I'm going to open a bracket up. So this is the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of f of s sine nx dx plus the integral from pi over 2 to pi of f of x sine nx f of x sine nx dx okay now for some reasons i'm not going to be solving this part why would i be solving this very part because from pi over 2 to pi my answer is zero and if i should integrate zero my answer is zero zero times anything is zero so i'm going to be leaving that part off so this b sub n equals 2 over pi Integral from 0 to pi over 2. What is f of x? This is x. So this is x sine nx dx. Okay. So this b sub n equals 2 over pi. Open a bracket up. All like that is very fast. Very easy, kind of. I'm going to write in, I'm going to write in my x. So write your x. After writing x, what do you do? Differentiate x, what do you get? 1. Your sine nx, bring it up. Integrate it. What will you be getting? You'll be getting minus cos nx over n, right? The same result that is here, minus cos nx over n. What do I do to it? I'm going to what? Integrate it again. So this will give me what? Minus sine nx over what? n squared. Then I'll be putting, uh, remember this is plus and this is minus. So this is 0 to pi over what? 2. Phew. Well... This guy is not just going to be easy for your series. Okay, let us see. I just hope that um, this video doesn't exceed how long I want it to be. So this b sub n equals 2 over pi. Um, the minus can be out. So this is minus x cos nx divided by um, n. Minus minus will give me a plus, so this is plus sine nx over n squared, and um, I have from zero to pi over two. And this is beautiful. Okay, now for this very guy, what would I be doing? This is not really easy. Okay, <sighs> okay, now this is b sub n equal to over pi. Um, I'll then be having. For the first time, the first bracket, what would I be doing? I'll be putting, anyway, CS, I'm going to be putting pi over 2. So this is going to be giving me minus pi over 2 cos pi over 2n divided by n plus sine pi over 2n divided by n squared minus, what I do next? Anyway, I see x, I'll be putting 0. And that part will be eliminated. Because for 0, if you should put 0 where x is, everything will become 0. Sine 0 is still 0. So that part is gone. So it means the only reasonable part is this very guy. So this is all we have. Okay. 
Beautiful, isn't it? Okay. Now, what is cos pi over 2n? Because I think with that very guy, we can do so many things. What is cos pi over 2n? We're going to be getting different results for that. So let us see. Cos pi over 2n. Thank you. Let me just use my calculator to get that. I don't want to waste much time again. Okay, so let us get started with cos 90. So cos 90 is 0. So this is where n is equal to 1. When n is equal to 1, cos 90 is equal to 0. When n is equal to 2, when n is equal to 2, so let us say we have cos 180, this guy will give me uh, minus 1. Now when n is equal to 3, that should be 270, cos 270, 0. So this cos pi over 2n is giving me 0. When n is equal to 4, what's going to be happening? Um, that should be, if it's 4, that's 360. Cos 360 degrees. Um, so that means cos pi over 2 be giving us 1. It's going to be somehow. Okay, so this is what we have. I think this is enough result for me to actually solve what I want. It's going to be enough result for me. So, so what I'm going to be doing. For the B sub n, I just need three answers. Yes, I don't want to waste my time with that. I just need to find three things, or maximum four things, for me to sum up. So let us just get started. Let us just get it over with. Now, B sub n is going to become, let us find B1. B1, let n be equal to 1. This will become 2 over pi, um, bracket, minus pi over 2, because when n is 1, what do we have? 0. So that means I can take off that part. So everything here will just become zero. I can take it off. So this bracket zero over n plus when n is one, what would I be getting for sine? I'll be getting what? I'll be getting one. This very part is easy. So this is one over n squared. Now remember that your n is what? One, right? Our n is one. So that means this n is one and this is also what? One. So B, one will then become, what will become the final answer? One over one is will be giving me what? One. So this guy is 2 over what? Pi. So that's what we'll be getting. Hold on. Let me reduce these numbers. Okay, and as such, I've reduced the noise that I have here. Okay. We're going forward, we're trying. This is not really easy. Okay. Now, everything here will be giving you zero. So we have one remaining. And one times what is outside is still what? One. So let us then proceed. Um, B2. B2. What will B2 become? This will become 2 over pi. Come to this very formula, we have minus pi over 2. If n is 2, what do we have? Minus 1, right? So it means this is bracket minus 1 over what is our n? 2. Then plus, if this part is 2, what will we be getting? 0. Please take note. Sine pi over 2, n. If it's even at all, anytime it's even, your answer is 0. Anytime it's even. So this part is 0. So this will then become b sub n equals 2 over pi. Um, first of all, to make life easy for me, I can say pi, sorry, 2 will cancel 2. I can also say pi will cancel pi. So what will then be remaining? Minus times minus is what? Plus. So that means I have 1 over 2 remaining. So this will then become the answer for this very guy. 1 over 2. So this is B2. Okay. The next guy, B3. And then that's where I'm going to be stopping, please. So this is 2 over pi. 2 over pi. And then I have minus pi over 2. If this n is 3, what's going to be happening? If n is 3, everything will become 0. So it means no need for me to be writing that because it's 0, then over 3, plus, if this is 3, we're going to be getting minus 1 because sine pi over 2 times 3, or you can say sine 3 pi over 2, we're going to be getting minus 1. So this is minus 1 over 3 squared. And this will be giving us, um, everything here is 0, so this guy is gone. 2 times minus 1, is uh, minus 2, then I have 3 squared pi. 
Okay, so that will become my bit today. And at this point, I am done. Eh? I cannot be doing for everything. So this is what I have. Okay, okay. So our final answer, since this is a um, sign series, um, f of s is going to become summation from n equal to 1 to infinity of um, all I'll be getting. I'll say that this is, um, hold on, b sub n sine nx. So this will then become f of s equal, let us get started. We've already gotten b1, right? b1 is 2 over pi, so this is 2 over pi sine x. There was b2, so this is 1 over 2 sine 2x. Plus what's b3? Um, this is minus, so this is minus 2 over 3 squared pi sine 3x. So this is going to become the answer. Yes, that's going to become the answer. You can factorize if you wish to. Yes, you can actually factorize. So let me just do that for you. Now, if you're asked to factorize, f of s is going to be, let me bring out 2 over pi. If 2 over pi should leave you, I'll be getting sine x. If 2 over pi wants to leave this very part, so what I'm going to be doing, um, where is it? This 2 over pi, right? So I'll be getting, um, hold on, let me not do something, um, Somehow, so when I turn, I'm going to be getting this. So this will become 4 pi. Yes, it's going to become 4 pi. So that, sorry, what am I going to do? Pi over 4. Okay, so this is not correct. Pi will cancel pi. 2 over 4 will give me over 2. So this is sine 2x. Then minus, what will be remaining here? 1 over 3 squared sine 3x. Okay, so that's what I have. That is what we have at that very part. That's what we have at that very part. Okay. Question five, question six. This video is taking longer than it should. So we'll be doing question six. And let us see how that is going to be. Okay. So question six says find the Fourier series. Find the Fourier series. Find the Fourier series for the periodic function, the periodic function f of x equal x over the interval, over the interval minus pi less than x less than pi and has period 2 pi. Obviously, the period is 2 period 2 pi. Now, question 6 and question 7 are going to go together. They said, setting, setting S equal pi over 2 in the Fourier series. In the Fourier series. In question 6 above. In question 6 above. Comma. Deduce a series. Deduce a series for... Pi over 4. So that means I'm going to be doing two guys there. I'm going to be solving for two things. The first and the second guy. But they are going to be the same in a way. They are both going to be the same. So let's look at this. In the first case, f of s is equal to x. s is an odd function. Now, we want to conclude it is odd by looking at the word at the interval. Remember I said something in my previous videos. Now, if the interval is of the form minus pi to pi, that this interval is called a symmetric interval. Now, this is symmetric and the function is odd, meaning I can use my shorter method. If this happens, I can say that I can solve number 6 by solving for only b sub n. Because if a function is odd, the only thing you need to solve for is b sub n. a naught will be 0 a sub n is going to also be 0. And remember, why am I doing this? Because the function is odd, the interval is also symmetric. Assuming this was 0 to 2 pi, I can't do this. I can't make this assumption. So I only made this assumption because it is minus pi towards pi. And s is also an odd function. I've said that before. So I'm going to be finding only bn. And bn is 1 over pi integral from minus pi to pi of um, f of x sine nx 
dx. So the function is actually odd. If you want to graph this thing, if you want to graph f of s equal to x, this is going to look like this. And I told you that for an odd function, whatever is on the first quadrant is going to be on the third quadrant. Or what's on the second is going to be on the fourth. Or if you rotate this 180 degrees, you will get the same graph back. So that's why I said, or this is how you find what? You find your odd functions. So this is what we have. So b sub n will then become 1 over pi, integral from minus pi to pi. f of s is what? x. Okay, so this is x sine nx dx. So I'm only going to be finding what? b sub n. Only b sub n. And please take note. Remember, formula for b sub n is of 2. We have this very one, and then we have also b sub n equals 2 over pi, integral from 0 to pi. But the thing is this, I'm not going to be using this one. The two formulas are the same, but I'm not going to be using this, because I was just given one function value, running from minus pi towards pi. So that's why I'm going to be using this other one. If I am to use this other one, it means I must have 0 towards pi. But there was nothing here stating that I have 0 to pi. So I hope you get that point now. Okay. Now look at this. S sine nx. This is obviously what? This is obviously integration by parts. So to make this very simple for me, I'm going to say b sub n is equal 1 over pi. Open a bracket. Write this very x down. This is x. Differentiate s, you will get what? 1. The next thing I'll do is, this is sine nx. Integrate sine nx, what would you be getting? You'll be getting minus cos nx over what? n. This is what you'll be getting. Now, integrate this result again. What would you be getting? This is going to become minus sine nx over n squared. So this will become uh, from minus pi to pi. And this is plus minus. And this method looks very, very straightforward. You know this integration by parts. I just did it in a much more faster form. So it's still the same thing. What we'll do is very simple. This is your x. Write your x down. And then you differentiate x to get 1. Differentiate 1, you're going to get 0. So don't need for you to write down that part. Sine nx, integrate it. You will get minus cos nx over n. If you integrate this answer again, first of all, there's a minus sign rather than a minus sign. Integrate cos nx. You have sine nx over n. So if that n should meet this n that was here before, you have your what? n squared. So let us continue. b sub n will then become 1 over pi. And this is minus s cos nx all over n. Minus and this minus will give me plus sine nx all over n squared. So this is minus pi to pi. To make life easy for me, this is sine. If I have sine, sine pi, or sine minus pi, my answer is always zero. Always zero. So this sine part is gone. I can say that b sub n will then be reduced to 1 over pi, and then I will then be having minus s cos nx over n from minus pi to pi. Okay, so this is b sub n equal 1 over pi. If you look at this carefully, n is a constant, right? I can bring out n. So I can bring out this very n. So this is over n. Then minus is a constant. I can bring out the minus. So the minus is outside now. Okay. So what would then be remaining inside? S cos nx will be remaining inside. So this is minus pi to pi. B sub n will then become minus 1 over n pi. Now, this part, what do I do? Anyway, CS, I'm going to be putting pi. So, this is x. This will become pi cos n pi. Then minus. This is s again. So, what will s become in the next case? It becomes minus pi cos n. This s will become what? Minus pi. Okay. And this is b sub n equal minus, I have um, minus 1 over n pi 
open this guy up, it becomes pi cos n pi minus times minus is plus pi cos n pi. Remember that I said cosine is an even function. So the cos of minus pi is still cos of pi. With the minus or without the minus, it's still the same result. Okay. So this will then become b sub n equal minus 1 over n pi. Pi cos n pi plus another pi cos n pi will give us 2 pi cos n pi. They are like terms, so I can easily do this. Now, at the end of the day, I can say that b sub n will become, pi can take away pi. Yes. Then 2 comes outside, this becomes minus 2 over n cos n pi. Now, this b sub n equal minus 2 over n. What is cos n pi? I give you the general formula for cos n pi. Minus 1 to the power of n. That's the general formula for cos n pi. So, that means b sub n is equal let us say n is odd for example let us say n is odd is an odd number if n is odd what is going to happen here this will become minus one minus one times minus two will give us what two over n and this is when n is what odd now b sub n will become what if n is even minus one squared will give us one 1 times minus 2 is minus 2 over what? n. So this happens when n is even. So at this point, can we compute the Fourier series? Yes, we can do that. We can do that. So I can say f of s is equal the summation from n equal to 1 to infinity of b sub n sine nx. And why can I do this or why am I doing this? Simply because I only have the b sub n things. So this is f of x equal, let me start summing it up, from n equal to 1. 1 is an odd number. So it means I'm going to be having 2 over 1, 2 over 1 because my n is 1, sine x. The next one is n at 2. If n is 2 is even, so this is minus 2 over 2, so this is minus 2 over 2, sine 2x because you have nx here, so you're going to, you're also going to write it down there. The next one is n equal to 3, which is odd, so this will become 2 over 3. This plus 2 over 3 sine 3x. Three the next guy minus 2 over 4 sine 4x, four and so on and so forth. So this you are going to be having. Now, if you look at this carefully, you can see that f of s is equal. 2 is common with everything. So this will become 2, open a bracket, sine x minus 1 over 2 sine 2x plus 1 over 3 sine 3x minus 1 over 4 sine 4x and so on and so forth. What I just did was to remove the 2 on top of everything here. Remove the 2 on top of everything there. So this guy is going to become the Fourier series. This is the answer for the Fourier series. So this is the answer for number six. Number seven says setting x equal pi over two. Meaning anywhere you see x, you're going to be putting pi over two. That's the meaning. Anywhere you see x, you're going to be putting pi over two. So let us see if we can deduce a series for this. Now, first of all, this was the answer that we got. Number seven. The answer, this is the answer that we got. Remember that f of x in the question, f of s is equal to x. So this will become x equal to sine x minus 1 over 2 sine 2x, two then 1 over 3 sine 3x three minus 1 over 4 sine 4x. Four now they said anywhere you see x, put pi over 2. So this is x, I'm going to be writing pi over 2 equal to 2. Then this will become sine pi over 2 minus half of sine 2 dot pi over 2 plus 1 over 3 sine 3 dot pi over 2 minus 1 over 4 sine 4 dot pi over 2. What I did was very simple. Anyway, you see x, you put your pi over 2. Okay. Now look at this carefully. 
if you take a very good look at the board, you will notice something. You know, ideally, if I should want to say I want to cross multiply, if I want to cross multiply, I can say two times two. Kind of multiplying, because this is like two over one. So these two can times these two, right? So this will become pi over, if two times two, let me say this very guy is the one coming here. So this will become four. And that's what they say you should find. You should find pi over four. So this will then be equal to what is inside this very bracket. Let us evaluate them and see what's going to be. What is sine pi over two? Sine pi over two is what? One. Now, if two takes away two, what's going to be happening here? This will become zero because sine pi is what? Zero. So that guy is gone. The next guy here says we have this very answer. Now, please take note. If this is a three, this is going to be giving you what? Minus one. Minus one times this will give you minus one over three. So that's what we have for that very point. Now, what will the answer of this guy become? The answer of this is going to become what? Zero. Because... 2 here 1, 2 here is 2. Sine 2 pi is 0. 0 times minus 1 over 4 is still 0. So this will then become how your series is going to look like. That is how the series is going to look like. So that is what we have for pi over 4. So we have that very guy for pi over 4. That's what we have for pi over 4. Okay, hold on. Okay. So, to make this thing much more complete, we can have plus 1 over 5, minus 1 over 7, plus 1 over 9, minus 1 over um, 11, and so on. I think this is how it's going to look like. Yes, it's going to be looking like that. So, that is your pi over 4. This is how your pi over 4 is going to be looking like. So, that's the answer to question 6 and question 7. Question 6 and question 7. The next one goes this way. Question 8 says, determine, determine the half range, the half range, Fourier, the half range, Fourier sine series, the half range Fourier sine series, to represent, to represent the function, to represent the function, f of s equal to 4x in the range, in the range, 0 less than equal to x less than equal to pi. Okay. Now, to make this much more sweeter, I'm going to be doing 8 and 9. The number 8 is going to become sine series. The number 9 is going to become cosine series. This came out in the test. The question came out in the test. So we have for sine series and we have for cosine series. So we're going to do both of them and see what it's going to look like. The reason why I picked the sine series is because sine series are much more easier to find because you only need to find B sub N. As you can see, this very answer, we only had sine terms inside, only sine terms. So that is why it's much more sweeter to always do the sine guy first of all. Okay. Now remember... When you're asked to find half range series, the formulas look as if you are solving when you know the formula, when the, when the function is even or odd, rather. You already know the function is even or odd. So those formulas that you're using, that the same formulas you're going to be using for half range Fourier series. So right now, I, I can see that B sub N is equal, oh, I've wiped out this very place. Ah, I just remembered something. I've wiped out that very place. I think I can even use this answer to solve my question. I just remembered. Oh, okay, okay. This is good. Now, B sub N is 1 over uh, pi integral from 0, right? From 0 to pi. In this case, I'm going to be putting a 2 at this very point because, as you can see, this range is a half range. So to get your complete int integration, you're going to double this very result. So that's why the 2 is in front of this. Then f of x sine nx dx. Now the answer of this and this are likely the same thing. Like it's just a multiple. So this b sub n equals 2 over pi integral from 0 to pi. f of s is 4x. The function is 4x. So this is 4x sine nx dx. 
So this B sub N equal 2 times 4, because 4 is a constant. 2 times 4 is 8. So this is 8 over pi integral from 0 to pi of x sine nx dx. So this is what we have for that. Now this B sub N equal 8 over pi. Now for this very part, what would I do? Write x down. Write x down. Differentiate x, what would you get? 1. When you are done with this guy, what would you do next? This is sine nx. Integrate sine ns, you get what? Minus cos nx over n. Now, this very answer that I've gotten here, integrate it again for this other side. What are you going to be getting? You'll be getting minus sine nx over what? Over n. With a square. Because there's already an n here. If you integrate cos nx, you will have another n. So that's why there's an n squared there. Now, don't forget, this place is plus. Here will then become minus. And this will be from 0 to pi. Now, this b sub n equals 8 over pi. Open this bracket up, it becomes minus s cos nx over n. Minus times minus plus sine nx over n squared from 0 to pi. Okay, good thing again is this. If you should put pi here and put 0 into sine, your answer is always 0. So this part is gone. So this will become b sub n equal 8 over pi. Then open this guy. What are we going to be having? Minus s cos nx all over n from 0 to pi. Now this b sub n equal minus here is a constant. This is a constant. So minus comes outside, n comes outside. So this minus 8 over n pi. Open this bracket up. You'll be having s cos nx. From 0 to pi. B sub n would then become minus 8 over n pi. Now, what would happen here? Anyway, I see so what I'll be putting. I'll be putting pi and this cos n pi. This will become the final answer. Why did I not put 0? This is s here. If I should put 0 in front of this, 0 times anything will give me 0. So, this is what we have. Now, in this case, can I say pi take away pi? Yes, I can do so. So, b sub n would then become minus 8 over n. What is left here? Cos n pi. Remember that cos n pi is minus 1 to the power of n. So, that is what we have for our b sub n. So, that is what we have for b sub n. Now, after that, what do we consider next? If it is even, what will be the result? So b sub n will become, imagine this was to the power of 1, an odd number to the power of 1. Minus 8 times minus 1 will give you what? Plus 8. So this is 8 over n. If n is odd, then b sub n will then become, imagine if this was to the power of 2. Minus 1 to the power of 2 will give you 2. Sorry, will give you 1. And 1 times this will give you minus 8 over n. So this happens when n is even. Now let us compute the Fourier series for this. So f of s is going to be equal to the sum from n equal to 1 to infinity of b sub n sine nx. This is a sine series and that is why the answer is like this because it is a sine series. So this is f of x equal, let us start summing it up. They said from n equal to 1 which is odd. So this will become 8 over 1 sine x. The next one, n is equal to 2, which is even. So this will become minus 8 over 2 sine 2x. 3 is odd. So this is plus 8 over 3 sine 3x minus even number 8 over 4 sine 4x. You continue like that. So this f of x equal, you can bring out the 8 on top. 8 is here, 8 is here, 8 is here, 8 is here. So this is 8. Um, open a bracket, sine x minus 1 over 2 sine 2x two plus 1 over 3 sine 3x. Three um, then what do we have there? Minus 1 over 4 sine 4x. Four so this is what you are going to be having. This is your final answer. And this can be called the half range Fourier sine series for that. So that's the answer. Number nine. Question nine is still going to be the same thing. 
but this time it's going to become cosine series. So it's still going to be the same thing. Determine, determine the cosine series. The cosine series for question 8. So I'm, I'm just going to be giving the same question, but this time we'll be determining the cosine series, just the cosine series. So we'll then see what the value of that is going to become. Okay. Well, the function is what? 4x. So don't forget that. The function is 4x. The function is just 4x. So let us see what that will give to us. Now, for a cosine series, you need a naught, you need a sub n, because that means it's an even function. So, we're going to be saying a naught is equal 2 over pi, integral from 0 to pi, f of x dx, because I was clearly giving my 0 to pi. The range of values was from 0 to pi. So, that's why I can use this. So, a naught will then become 2 over pi, and then... Um, integral from 0 to pi, f of s is what? 4x. Then you put your dx. Because that's why f of s is 4x. Now this will become a naught equal, this very 4 can come outside. So 2 times 4 is 8 over pi. Integral from 0 to pi of x dx. If you should integrate s, what would you be getting? You'll be getting s squared over 2. Because this is a 1. So 1 plus 1 divided by 1 plus 1. Then you put your 0 to pi. So this a naught equal 8 over pi. What do we do here? Anywhere you see as you put your what? Your pi. So this will become pi squared over what? 2. No need to put the 0 because if you put 0, your 0 squared is 0. 0 over 2 is still 0. And this a naught equal 2 years 1. 2 into this is 4. So this will be giving me what? 4 pi because pi squared over pi will give me pi so that means a naught is equal to what 4 pi that's the meaning a naught is 4 pi now what about a sub n a sub n is 2 over pi integral from 0 to pi of f of s cos nx dx so this is what we have for that very guy so this is a sub n equal 2 over pi um, integral um, integral from 0 to pi of 4x cos nx dx. This a sub n equal 2 times 4 is 8 over pi. Integral from 0 to pi of x cos nx dx. So this is what we're going to be having. Now this a sub n equal 8 over pi. Now this very point I'll use the method of um, integrating by parts. Write down x. Differentiate this very S, you get 1. So give a little bit of space. Integrate cos nx. What would you be getting? You will get sine nx all over what? n. Integrate sine nx all over n. You will get what? Minus cos nx cos nx all over n squared. And don't forget that this is going to be from 0 to pi. So this is 0 to pi. And this is plus... And this is what? Minus. Now this is a sub n equal 8 over pi. This will become x sine nx all over n. Minus times minus is plus cos nx all over n squared. And this is from 0 to pi. Now remember, sine is a very, let me not say it's very stupid. But sine has a very big problem. At 0 and pi, the value is 0. So that means this very guy is going to be eliminated. I need to lay this very guy. Look at it. If you say sine pi, your answer is 0. If you say sine 0, your answer is still 0. So a sub n will become 8 over pi. And this will become cos nx over n squared from 0 to pi. Okay. Now this n squared is a constant, right? So I can bring it out. So this is a sub n equal... 8 over pi n squared because it's a constant. At this point, what would I do for cos nx? Anyway, I see it, I'll be putting what? We're putting pi and 0. So this is cos n pi minus cos 0. Now this a sub n equal 8 over pi n squared. Now what's cos n pi? The formula I gave for cos n pi is minus 1 to the power of n. 
then minus what is called zero one the formula for this is always one now at this point you will then determine if it is even what is going to happen if it is odd what is going to happen because you can't simplify any further so you ask yourself if it is if, if it is even what is going to happen if it is odd what is going to happen let us go to odd first of all yes imagine if n is to the power of one we'll be having minus one minus one and what is minus one minus one that's minus two minus two times a to give us minus 16. so a sub n will then become minus 16 over n squared this answer is looking so weird okay what if n is even minus one to the power of two is what one one minus one is what zero so it means everything will become zero so a sub n this is for odd the next thing is a sub n is equal to zero for even so i can now compute my fourier series i will say that f of s is equal a naught over two plus the summation from n equal to one to infinity of a sub n cos nx now this f of s equal what is a naught a naught is four pi this is going to become four pi over two and then hold on i think i'm saying something there's a pi here yes there's a pi here i did not put it there's a pi so there's a pi here okay pi n squared there's a pi there okay then plus now if i want to start summing this very thing n is always an odd number for it to exist always an odd number so let me start with n equal to one what am i going to be having i'll be having minus 16 over pi because if you say one squared is still one so this cos x the next one if it's odd again minus 16 over pi 3 squared or you can say 3 squared pi because you are picking it at 3 so this is cos 3x the next one minus 16 over 4 squared pi cos 4x the next one okay this is 4 4 is even so it's not going to be existing here so this is 5 and this is 5 then this is minus 16 over 7 squared pi cos 7x i think that should be enough so let me just rewrite this in a much more better form minus 16 is common so bring out minus 16. f of s will become 4 pi over 2 will give us 2 pi then minus 16 is common short minus 16 over pi is common so this is minus 16 over pi now what will be happening here this will become cos x plus 1 over 3 squared cos 3x plus 1 over 5 squared cos 5x plus 1 over 7 squared cos 7x so that's what the final answer is going to be looking like that is what the final answer is going to be looking like that is what our final answer is going to be looking like this is beautiful okay question 10 we're almost done with this question 10 Question 10 says, obtain the half range, obtain the half range uh, cosine series, obtain the half range cosine series for f of x equal x minus 2 all squared in the interval, in the interval, zero less than x less than two i'm supposed to be ending at number 10 but it seems i might take an extra question to justify when the period is not two pi to justify when the period is not two pi because almost every question they all have their periods to be two pi even this very guy that i'm solving they have the period to be two pi that is why the integral has over pi here that is why that is why but right about now what if the period is not two pi so that's why I'll be solving that very question. So let us see if I can do this very, very fast. Because it's going to be taking us a whole lot of time to solve this. A whole lot of time to solve it. Okay. Now, the good thing here is this. This is an even period.
period. This guy is even. So life is simple for us already. Like very, very simple for us. Very, very simple for us. It's already very simple for us. So let us see if we can do this guy very fast. Now, before we proceed, what happens when the period is not 2 pi? When the period is something else, what is the formula for Fourier series when this happens? Ideally and generally, the formula for Fourier series, the formulas rather, says A0 is 1 over L, integral from minus L to L of f of s dx. This is the basic formula. This is the basic formula. Where L is half of your period. So you will notice that all the equations we've been solving ever since, that the period is 2 pi, you will notice that this is always 1 over pi because pi is simply half of this. So they always have this very guy to get this. So let me just write the formulas down. Then um, B, oh, sorry, A sub n first. A sub n is going to become 1 over L, integral from minus L to L of f of s, cos n pi x over l dx beautiful right that's what we have now b sub n is 1 over l integral from minus l to l of f of s sine n pi x over l dx very very beautiful so this is what we have whenever the period is no longer 2 pi whenever it's no longer 2 pi what is just the new thing here our l and what is l l is half of the period now, to make life easy for us, this is the interval here. This is what we have. This is our interval here, right? So, we have 0, less than x, less than what? 2. Now, to solve this question, look at this. The last question we just solved, or should I say yes, the last question we just solved. This is cosine series. It means there should be a 2 in front of whatever we are solving, right? So, if there is a 2 in whatever we are solving, we are going to be half in. We are going to be, I say half in. Yes, it's correct. We are going to be taking the half of this very guy. We're going to be taking the half of this very guy. It is going to become, it's going to become A0. It's going to become 2 over, what is L in this case? In this very case, what is going to become our L in this very case? See, your L is going to be 2. Do you know that ideally, this very, if you were given this um, question in its complete form, the period is actually 4. This very question, the period is actually 4. But it gave you half, like half part of it. The last question we just saw, look at the last question we just saw. They said 0 less than s less than what? Pi. It doesn't mean that the period is pi. No, the period is actually 2 pi. But they gave you a range which is half of it. So since your L is already half of the period and they've already given you half of the range, your L is just two no need for you to come and half this very two so this is two over two integral from this will then become zero to what two so this is zero to two of f of x dx very very fine this is very very beautiful i know this is like the first time we are saying this but it's actually okay so a naught then become two over two they will both cancel so then have integral from zero to two what is f of x x minus 2 all squared so this is x minus 2 all squared dx okay now i believe you remember how to still integrate i don't want to open this bracket up so what do we do here let us integrate this this will become x minus 2 2 plus 1 is 3 all over what 3 times differentiate this bracket what will be getting 1 so no need for you to stress yourself so this will just become all over 3 then you say 0 to what 2 0 to 2. So this will then become, anyway, you see this, oh, this will still give us 0. We should put 2 here. 2 minus 2 is what? 0. So this is going to become 2 minus 2 all cubed over 3 minus 0 minus 2 all cubed over 3. So all this become, everything will be giving us what? 0. Minus 2 to the power of 3 is what? Minus 8. Minus 8 times this minus will give us 8 all over what? 3. So that means your A naught is 8 over 3. That's your A naught. 8 over 3. You can confirm that using Warframe Alpha. 
or using math way, depending on the application you are using. So this guy is 8 over 3. A sub n is going to become what? It's going to become 2 over L, 2 over L, integral from 0 to 2, because that's what we have here, 0 to 2, of f of s cos n pi x over L dx. So this is A sub n equal 2 over, what is our L? L is 2. Integral from 0 to 2. What is f of x? s minus 2 all squared cos n pi x over L is what? 2 dx. We're going to try to see how we can integrate this without making mistakes. Without making mistakes. We're going to try to see how we can integrate that. And I think this question might serve its purpose for other questions. So I might even be ending here. I might be ending here. So 2 we cancel 2, we'll be having 1. So this a sub n equal integral from 0 to 2 of x minus 2 to the power of 2 cos n pi x over 2 dx. Now how do we integrate this? Integration by parts. A sub n is going to become, I'm going to open this very bracket up. Now I'm going to write x minus 2 squared first of all. So this is s minus 2 all squared first of all. Give it a space. Differentiate x minus 2 all squared. What are you going to be having? You'll be having 2 bracket x minus 2. If you want to differentiate that, that's what you're going to be getting. You'll be getting 2 bracket x minus 2. Differentiate 2 bracket x minus 2 again. What are you going to be getting? Hmm, let us see. You're just going to be getting a um, 2 at the end of the day. You'll be getting a 2. Now, look at this. If you cannot really differentiate this, if you can't do it, it's very simple. You can actually open the bracket up if you wish to. You can open the bracket up. Okay, but let us continue. This is cos n pi x over 2. Can we integrate it? Yes. Start first by differentiating this angle part, the angular part with respect to x. So with respect to x, what will be the result of this? n pi over 2, right? So I'm going to say that this is times 1 over n pi over 2. Then I will be saying, integrate cos, what will they get? Sine, then you put the angle back, n pi x over 2. And this is looking very, 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 very tedious. Let me give this a space. 2 so bracket x minus 2. Okay, this is looking very, very fine. Okay, now this very result here, this very result that we have here, all of this result that we have here, integrate this result again. Integrate this result again. Now, what are we going to be having? You start with this guy first of all. Start with n pi over 2. So, this n pi over 2, I'm going to be saying that this is, I hope that I'm going to have space for this. So, this is times minus, why is it a minus? If you should integrate sign, you're going to be getting minus cos. So this is minus 1 over n pi over 2 all squared. Why is it all squared? Because if you integrate everything here, you have to first of all start by differentiating the angle. So differentiate with this reverse set of x, you'll be getting n pi over 2. And it's still coming to meet the n pi over 2 that has been outside. So it's just a squared. And then you put cos n pi x all over what? 2. Don't forget that I wrote a 2 before and I cleaned it up. So I'm going to say plus, not plus 2, just 2. Then what do I do? This very answer, integrate it again. So this will become times minus 1 over n pi over 2 all to the power of what? 3. All to the power of 3. Then this will become sine n pi x over 2. I can close this up and put from 0 to what? 2. I'll then put my limits from 0 to 2. Now, what sign would I give to them? The first one takes a plus, second one takes a minus, last one takes a plus. So I've been using this formula ever since and it works. Instead of using the long um, integration by parts. So what this now becomes, let us simplify to see what we're going to be getting. So this is x minus 2 all squared. What will be the inverse of this very answer? The 2 is going to go up. So this will then become times 2 over n pi of sine 
n pi x over 2. Now this is minus, and this is another minus, so this is going to give me a plus. So this is plus 2, s minus 2. Now, if I take the inverse of this, 2 squared is what? 4. So the 4 will be going up. So this times 4 over n pi squared, n pi squared, cos n pi x over 2. This is what I'll be getting. On this very side, plus times minus will give me a minus. So this is 2 times 2 to the power of 3 is 8. So that very 8 goes up. So this is 8 over n pi cubed. And this will become sine n pi x over 2. And this is from 0 to 2. I know this is very long, but we have no other choice than to do it. We have no other choice than to do this. We have no other choice than to do it. Okay, now to make life very, very easy for us. Well, when I mean very, very easy, I mean very, very easy. Look at your sign. Look at your sign terms. First of all, if you should put the value of 0 wherever you see sign, your answer is 0. Secondly, if you put the value of 2 here, look at it. Imagine if this x here, this very x here, you then put a 2 here. 2, we cancel 2. Remember that sine n pi is always 0. So it means that Wherever I'm seeing sign, my answer is always zero. Because if I should put two and I put zero, my answer is zero. Meaning the only realistic part is this very side. This side is the only realistic side. So a sub n will then become um, two times four is eight. Okay, hold on. So this is eight. Um, eight x minus two over n pi squared. Now what is outside? Cos n pi x over 2. Don't forget that I'm still putting 0 to 2. Now this a sub n equal, let us now evaluate this. Anywhere we see s, what do we put? We put a 2. So this is going to become, if I should put 2 here, this is also very beautiful. If I should put 2 here now, 2 minus 2 is 0, right? 2 minus 2 is 0. So 0 times everything here will give me what? 0. But what if I put a 0? I believe that's where an answer is going to come from. So this is going to become 0 minus, put a 0 now. This will become 8 bracket 0 minus 2 is minus 2 over n pi squared. And this is cos, cos 0 is what? Cos 0 is 1. So this will become a sub n equal minus times minus is plus. So this will be giving me 16 over n pi squared. Um, times 1. So that's what we just have. That is your a sub n. A sub n. So let me just make it much more simplified. This will become 16 over n squared pi squared. So this is what you'll be getting for your a sub n. So whether it's even or odd, that's the answer that you'll be using. So I believe right now you will know how to solve, how to express whenever your period is no longer 2 pi. So that's why this question, there are so many other questions like that, but time and so many things will not let us so but i'll be making videos on that in the future okay f of x is equal a naught over 2 plus the sum from n equal to 1 to infinity of a sub n cos nx now this f of s equal what is your a naught a naught is 8 over 3 so this is 8 over 3 don't forget that there's an over 2 in the formula so this is dot 2 plus the summation from n equal to 1 to infinity. What is a sub n? a sub n is 16 over n squared pi squared. So this is 16 over n squared pi squared. Cos n x. Now this is f of x equal 4 over 3 simply because 2 can divide 8. Then plus, look at this carefully. 16 over pi squared is a constant. So this is 16 over pi squared with the summation from n equal to 1 to infinity of what will be left here if 16 over n squared goes outside. 1 over n squared cos nx. So it means your answer can be left like this. If the question says leave your answer in the nth term, this is the answer. But if you want to go further, if you want to go further, this will become f of s equal 4 over 3 plus 16 over pi squared, then open a bracket. Let n be equal to 1. What will this become? 
cos x plus 1 over 2 squared cos 2x plus 1 over 3 squared cos 3x plus 1 over 4 squared cos 4x and so on and so forth. So this will become the final answer to the question. That will become the final answer to the question. And with this, I have completed the series. I am done with Fourier series. And this will be all. I wish you success in your exam. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and like this very video. Thank you.